Hello YouTube, I'm Joanna, this is Tina, and we are Crafting with Tina. On today's episode, I'll show you a sneak peek inside my studio as I make a shrinky dink pen um, like this one here. This is the character David Rose, and this is a bestseller in my Etsy shop. We'll be making um, some shrinky dink pens like this today. Here you go, baby girl. I don't have any more treats for you. To start, I'll share with you some of the original drawings that I made and have now created into pins. Here's Moira Rose. Elect Moira Rose for town council. And how I do this is I pick things that are just my favorite TV shows and movies. I find a spot or a moment that I like best and I make an original drawing. As you can imagine, making drawings of this detail takes a little time. Here's David. So um, to cut down on time, I use a special type of shrinky dink film or shrink plastic that can go through the printer. And so that way, I don't have to make an individual drawing for every single order. That would take a long time and I would have to charge a lot more for that. Instead, I'm making prints of one of my original drawings. Shrinky Dinks is one popular brand. They create a lot of different kinds of shrink plastic and one of them that I use all the time is the Inkjet Creative Pack because this can go through an inkjet printer. You can also use um, another brand that I like which is called Graphics and it's based out of Ohio and I'm also based out of Ohio, so I like that. Um, these are both quality choices that you can try out. I use a Cricut cutter machine to cut the shapes of the shrinky dinks, which saves me a lot of time when I'm working in batches. This is the Cricut cutter software where I can format the images into what's called a print then cut file. The first step in a print then cut file is printing, of course. Hey, look who's back, it's Tina. <laughs> I've now printed this up and this is from my Cricut software. You'll notice that I was able to fit quite a few images on here so I can make several pins. And there's also this black box that's created when it's printed. And it's really quite neat. What the Cricut cutter does is it looks as it senses this black box so that it can get everything in alignment and cut almost to perfection around each of these shapes. You ready, Tina? Let's do this. The shrink paper is held secure on the blue sticky mat. The mat moves back and forth while the blade moves side to side to cut. While the images are being cut, let's preheat the oven to 325 degrees. The images are cut and the paper is ready to peel. I arrange the shrinky dinks onto a pan with some parchment paper to keep them from sticking. And out the ready, we have a plate which we'll use to smoosh them down flat when they get out of the oven. This is the most fun part. Let's check up on our shrinky dinks. Not a lot of activity yet. You can see them curling up just a bit. It usually takes about three to four minutes for them to completely shrink down, but don't dismay. If you see them curl up, they will flatten out. You don't have to pick a specific amount of time for them to be in. Just keep an eye on them from time to time. And when they flatten back out, that's when you know they'll re they're ready. They're really starting to curl up. They're almost ready. After taking them out of the oven, you have about 10 seconds where they're still warm, and if they're a little wavy, you can smoosh them flat. I chose this plate because the bottom of the surface is very flat. I'm gonna let that sit there a moment and then show you guys the results. Ta-da! 
you can see that they're now taking up much, much less space on the pan. They've shrunk to about a third of their original size and they look fabulous. Well, I'm gonna finish getting my pen ready to ship out for the next order. This has been another episode of Crafting with Tina. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.